Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to Phil and Dave's Excellent Adventures. Just Dave here today. I'm talking about the movie No One Will Save You. This is going to be a spoiler review, so if you have not seen the movie yet and you are concerned about spoilers, I would suggest you go and watch the movie first before you watch this review. So, No One Will Save You is, spoilers, <laughs> a movie about a young woman who is uh, alienated in her small town and uh, is, well, abducted. Well, she, she is uh, visited by aliens who attempt to abduct her. So, uh, as far as what I liked about the movie, overall, I thought the cast was great. It's mostly Caitlin Dever, um, who, uh, of course, is most famous for probably Booksmart, which came out a couple of years ago, Olivia Wilde's movie. Um, but actually, I was just watching Justified, and she shows up on that in season two, I think. Um, and that's actually where I saw the ad for this, because it was also on Hulu. So, hey, yeah, she's great in this. She does a good job. There are a few other actors, uh, Josh Duham, Duhame as the mailman. Uh, Lauren Murray is Bryn's mom, uh, a couple other people, her friend's mom and dad. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it, it's mostly just the Caitlin Dever show. And I thought she did a, a good job with it. Uh, I really liked the cinematography. It was by a guy named Aaron Morton, who uh, has done a lot of TV shows like Rings of Power and Sweet Tooth. I think he did some uh, Black Mirror as well. And uh, he did the director's uh, previous movie, Spontaneous. Um, but yeah, I thought the cinematography was great. I liked a lot of really cool overhead shots, a lot of really interesting uh, sort of lighting choices. And, and I thought everything looked really good. The movie mostly takes place at night, or at least uh, a good majority of the scenes take place at night. And uh, for the most part, it's easy to see. You can tell what's going on. It's easy to follow the action. I appreciated all of that. Um, the movie had a cool uh, kind of 60s aesthetic to it, which at some point I almost like forgot as I'm watching it. She's kind of in her house dancing around and she's wearing her little flower dresses and she's got like an old school phone on the wall. And I'm like, wait, is this movie set in the 60s? I forgot. And I'm like, no, no, they, they had modern cars. I'm pretty sure. And then they show her car and it's like a Subaru. So like, no, it's, it's not set in the 60s, but it, it almost does have that look. At least her house certainly does, which I like. That was cool. I really like the music in this, um, partially because, again, spoilers, there's no dialogue in this movie or, or just one line basically uh, the music really has to carry a lot of weight here you know it's pretty much the only thing that's really uh you know giving you anything to go off and then i really liked it, it was by a guy named joseph uh, trapanese i've talked about him before uh and i don't remember what movie it was now but he he did the uh score for tron legacy with daft punk uh, he did the raid he's done a bunch of bunch of different stuff i wonder what the other movie i reviewed he did i don't remember um, but yeah, I thought the movie was legitimately really suspenseful and at times very, very creepy. And I did really appreciate that, um, especially the first sort of alien scene, the first time the alien breaks into her house and you see it, you know, and at first I, I, in the trailer, you couldn't even really tell it was about aliens. Uh, at least I couldn't. Um, and, and so that comes in and I'm like, oh, okay, it's an alien. That's crazy. And then you see it. And then for a second in the beginning, maybe it was actually practical, but you kind of just see like the shadow and you just see like the top of its head as she goes up the stairs. And I'm like, oh, cool, cool. They're doing like a Jaws thing where like you don't really get to see the alien that, that much. I really kind of like that, actually. But no, then they do show the alien. And I actually thought the alien looked pretty good. There's there's like three or four different aliens in this movie, uh, but they all look fairly similar, just different variations. One's kind of smaller, one's a lot bigger. But uh, the overall look of the aliens I thought was pretty cool. I especially appreciated that uh, the the one that she kind of sees the first time has these these hands that almost look, or these feet rather, that almost look like hands, the way they kind of come up off the ground and everything and, and move around all creepy like. I thought that was very cool and very creepy and very effective. And I really liked it. Um, I also like there's this sort of bus scene uh, where she's on and and some guy kind of says something creepy to her and you know she gets attacked and she realizes that they've all been you know taken over by aliens or whatever um there's a, a wall throw at one point where she gets thrown through a wall and it looks great i think they probably just put a stunt woman on a rope and pulled her through a wall but uh, yeah it looked really good uh, as far as i can tell practical if it was cgi it was it was really well done um there's uh, some other alien scenes as well the, the one with the fridge i thought was pretty cool that was a, an earlier alien scene i really liked that it was very suspenseful and very creepy um and the way it kind of peered over the edge of it and everything that was really fun i really appreciate the movie it was very different um and you know it, it certainly had some similarities to, to movies but I, I can't think of another sort of uh home invasion movie with aliens in it um, signs maybe uh but uh yeah I, I i appreciated that and it was very unexpected and i i i I think I like the ending. I think. I'm, I, yeah. <laughs> it's a weird movie, though. Uh, so, far as what I didn't like about it, uh, so I did like the design of the aliens, but my issue with them was they were actually kind of a little too cute for me, uh, particularly like that fridge scene. I like the way that, you know, they, they kind of, she's in the corner and they open up the door because the aliens have telekinetic powers and like it kind of peers over. I'm like, oh, cool. But then like, He's got these kind of cute little eyes, like a very traditional kind of gray alien, at least in the face. 
Um, they kind of have these like avocado eyes or whatever. And I just, I felt like they could have been a little more menacing looking. I know they're going for that traditional kind of gray alien look, but I feel like maybe they could have given, given them a little bit more personality or a little bit more aggressiveness to their facial features. And I also didn't really kind of like the area between the, the face and the nose. And I think maybe that's just a human being thing. When you see something without a nose, it looks weird, but something about it still looked a little off the way it moved and the way it, in the close-up scenes of the alien's face, uh, I didn't love it. Um, there's also a car scene where a larger alien tries to attack her and, and kind of gets stuck inside the car. I thought the CGI in that looked a little off to me. I think maybe it's just because, again, it's a weird scene trying to imagine this, you know, giant uh, alien thing inside this car. Um, and, but then also when the car gets kind of set on fire because she sets it on fire, I thought the fire was pretty bad. Um, you could definitely tell there were it was like a, just a composited kind of um, plug in effect because you can kind of see like it, it would repeat. You would see the same pattern here and then over here and like kind of back over here. And I'm like, OK, so that's that's clearly very fake uh, fire there. So. Yeah, that's fine. I understand. Uh, so yeah, like I kind of mentioned before, the movie has almost no dialogue at all. And uh, that, again, is something I didn't know going into it. And I didn't even realize till probably a good 10 or 15 minutes in the movie where I'm like, wait a minute, has nobody said anything yet? And then I'm like, oh, is that what? That, okay, that's what this movie is. Okay, fine. And that's cool. I actually really enjoyed that. But I do think, for me at least, there were times where I got a little bored. And I think probably because there's not really a lot of dialogue. And I think for the most part, especially in the first half hour or so, 45 minutes, it was compelling. It was interesting. I was paying attention. I was watching. I was really, really liking the movie. And I'm like, this is great. It's, it's, it's very high concept and a little pretentious, but hey, so am I. So that's the kind of thing that I like. I'm into this. But I definitely, uh, toward the end there and then the kind of the third act, started to drift off a little bit, started to kind of like, you know, think about other stuff and you know so i do feel like maybe i don't know maybe, maybe if the movie the movie's only an hour and a half it's only 30 minutes but maybe it would have worked better as like a short than like a full-length movie um i thought the reveal was a little obvious I, I figured out pretty early on that she probably killed her friend i think most people probably could but especially once like her friend's mom spits in her face you're like okay well this is pretty obvious um and so i guess i, I figured out okay she killed her friend that's that's i assumed it was probably an accident or something like that and i guess the reveal that it wasn't it was an accident, but it wasn't entirely an accident. It, it was sort of an act of of anger um, that she did it. It was kind of interesting, but I don't know. I guess I was hoping for something a little more interesting or a little different. Um, I was kind of surprised that her friend's death didn't have anything to do with the aliens. Um, like maybe her friend had been taken over by an alien or something, and then that's why she had to kill her, but other people didn't realize um, or, or something like that. But it, it, as far as you can tell, it wasn't really connected unless... She was trying to tell her friend about the aliens and her friend didn't believe her. And that's why they got into the argument. I, I guess I, I don't really know there. Um, I also think it's kind of funny that uh, uh, these aliens, you know, they're, they're these very advanced beings who can create these spaceships with tractor beams and everything else. But like they don't wear clothes. Uh, they're not aware of, of the concept of stabbing. <laughs> they, they, they don't have any way to protect against just, you know, basic kind of puncture wounds. Uh, that seemed a little surprising to me. I also didn't really get the whole alien double thing. I thought it was cool. The, the, the thing with like the, the tentacles or whatever that came out, it looked a lot like this thing I saw a salmon um, barf up on the internet the other day. But I guess I didn't quite understand. So they, they put those things in their body and duplicate them and then take them over. But then those things are like still in the throat of the duplicates. So I guess why duplicate the people? Why not just take over the people's bodies? They just seemed like an extra step that didn't necessarily need to be there. Um, and then I guess I didn't really understand at the end why the aliens decided to spare Bryn. Was it because she had killed her double? So they were like, hey, you you won. You get to not be replaced. Or was it because she had killed some of them? So they were like, hey, respect. You know, we we game recognize game. Or was it because they they saw the, the sort of trauma that she had experienced and were like, you know what? She's been through enough. Let's, let's let her go on and she can be happy. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And, and from what I understand, uh, I did read a little bit about what the director said. And he did say it was kind of about, you know, trauma and that kind of stuff. And in a way, I think using um, an alien invasion as an allegory for alienation is kind of interesting. Um, but it, it wasn't really an allegory. And I guess that kind of surprised me because I expected it to be. The whole time I'm watching the movie, I'm like, OK, so this girl had experienced trauma. She's uh, going through, you know, some kind of psychosis or, or she's sort of imagining this and like it's going to be eventually revealed that she, you know, these people aren't really, you know, that hostile to her or or there's a good reason for people being hostile to her. Um, but yeah, I, I guess it just kind of seemed, at least from my understanding of it, it was just a, a woman who had been through trauma 10 or 12 years before 
And then now her entire town, maybe the entire world is being invaded by aliens. And so, yeah, like, again, the ending seemed to be that um, she, the aliens kind of decided to let her live, but everyone else has been taken over. But now she's happy because everyone else is being controlled by aliens. So it's kind of a, a darkly happy ending in a way. And I kind of liked it because I guess it was just unexpected. But I also was a little disappointed by it, I think. Um, I, I don't know. I guess maybe maybe I would have liked it more if it was an allegory. Maybe that's a little too Hollywood, a little too predictable. But um, I don't know. E either way, I did feel a little a little disappointed, I think. Um, so other than that, the movie is directed by a guy named Brian Duffield. Uh, he directed the movie before this called Spontaneous that he also wrote. Uh, he wrote Love and Monsters, which I enjoyed. I thought that was pretty good. Underwater, which I don't think I saw. And The Babysitter, which I think I saw. And I think I liked it. Uh, he also wrote a bunch of stuff in the Blacklist script, um, some of which, like Jane Got a Gun, did eventually turn into a movie. Uh, another one he wrote is Your, Bride, Your Bridesmaid is a Bitch, which uh, has not been made into a movie yet. But uh, yeah, uh, Blacklist is usually movies that uh, are really well liked within Hollywood, but are considered unproducible for whatever reason, sometimes just for content or for... Uh, just political correctness or just being too sort of uh, taboo or risque sometimes for uh, various other reasons money budget who, who knows um so speaking of budget this movie had a 22.8 million dollar budget um it didn't really release in theaters or if it did it was very limited so it doesn't really have any kind of figures for you know box office uh, it was released on hulu for uh, people on hulu so by the way thanks to my buddy rob for let me use your account please don't change your password um, I did appreciate this being on Hulu. Uh, he's got the the one with ads in it, which I mean, I can't complain about. But I think there was really only like maybe two or three ad breaks um, in this movie. I think just two. Um, so I appreciate that. It didn't, didn't split it up too much. Um, Rotten Tomatoes on this one, critics are at 78% and the audience at 58%, which sounds about right to me. I, I can definitely see this being a movie that critics like more than audiences. It seems like um, for the audience, at least the the divisive part seems to be the ending. You know, the way that it's sort of all revealed and wrapped up and whether they liked it or not. So I think it really depends on the people. Um, in some ways, this movie reminded me of Signs, a little bit like a, a more horror version of E.T. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of uh, Home Alone in there and a little bit of the movie Prey, the, the Predators movie Prey. Um, yeah, there's basically only one line of dialogue in this entire movie, at least that's, you know, um, that you can understand. And uh, that's when she says, I'm sorry, Maude, I'm sorry to a friend who she killed um okay it reminded me a lot of the uh, buffy the vampire slayer episode hush uh which was i think in the fourth season of that show written by joss whedon i believe it was the only one in the series to be nominated for an emmy for writing um there is some talking some dialogue in that but it's only i think in the beginning and the end most of the episode is is mostly silent um it also reminded me a bit of some wordless picture books that, that i've seen uh sean tan is a guy australian guy i think who's uh, pretty well known for making me made the arrival and lost and found um tommy DePaula did pancakes for breakfast david weisner tuesday there's a bunch of these kind of wordless picture books and so this kind of idea of telling a story without words or without dialogue is is not an entirely new one i'm sure there's probably other movies that have done it as well um but I don't know. I, I thought it was an interesting idea, an interesting concept, and I sort of appreciated that I didn't know going into it that that's what it was. And I don't know. I, I guess it's hard to say now, but it would be interesting if I would have known going into it, if it didn't have any dialogue, how that would have affected my appreciation of the movie. I'm not sure. But I think for me, the gimmick did wore, wear a little thing. Like, I, I do think that maybe if, if this would have been a 25 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute short movie, I would have thought it was amazing. But as like a full 93 minute or whatever movie... I, I just didn't like it as much as I wanted to, although I did appreciate it. It's very, very well done. It looks great. And I appreciate a lot of the scares and I really wanted to like this movie. I was a little unsatisfied by it. So I think I'm going to give it a six out of 10. But if you saw the movie, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great night and I will see you here again next week.